It is the time. Let's turn to those two front pages we looked at about uh, 45 minutes or so ago for the Daily Telegraph. Spies take the fight to tech scammers for the Times. Cold calling ban to fight financial fraudsters. This is a £7 billion a year racket. And it is estimated around 1 in 15 of you, probably us, I'm sure I have been caught in the past, I'm sure I have, 1 in 15 of us, and I'll be asking you, have you been a victim? Let's get more details on how this will work and how cold calling will be banned. From Conservative MP and Security Minister Tom Tugendhat, who joins me now. Uh, Good to have you on, Minister. Thank you. Um, Noting that a lot of these calls can emanate from overseas, how are you going to ban them? Good morning. Good morning. Look, this is where we're working with companies and we're working with Ofcom and others to make sure that we close this down. What we're doing is we're banning so-called SIM farms, which are uh, allowing uh, individuals to send out huge numbers of uh, text messages, uh, hundreds of millions in some cases, to uh, numbers across the United Kingdom. And we're banning spoofing as well. Spoofing is where uh, you receive a a phone call or a text message from somebody you think it is, but actually it's from a different number. And so we're, we're, we're closing those routes down. Uh, because what we need to do is we need to use technology and we need to use um, companies working in this area to block fraudsters. We then need to pursue those who are uh, committing fraud. And that's why, as you know, we're setting up a new national fraud squad with 400 uh, investigators. And then, of course, we're going to uh, we're also empowering individuals to uh, help protect themselves by thinking about how uh, we use our technology. You'll be aware of the maxim in policing circles, if in doubt, form a squad. How will we know that the National Fraud Squad has actually achieved anything, Minister? Well, look, we're going to be bringing fraud down, and you'll be able to see this in the numbers. I mean, frankly, when? we've got when, a national... When, Minister? Uh, well, in coming uh, over the next year and t- or two, I mean, we're going to be seeing uh, a difference, I think, relatively quickly. The the difference, though, will primarily come from uh, the companies and the way in which they close down the routes. And that's why we're working with the tech companies and the telecom companies. The pursue element, as it were, the arrest element is in fraud a little bit different because, as you rightly say, Nick, quite a lot of this is abroad. So... In some ways, this is not an area where traditional policing can make as much difference as it can in some other areas. So, you know, you've seen, for example, vehicle crime is down 22 percent since 2019. You've seen community uh, neighbourhood crime is down some 50 percent in the last few years. You know, we've seen various elements of crime that we can deal with by the uh, record number of police officers that we now have actually coming down. This is a bit different and this requires the intelligence unit, so the National Fraud Intelligence Unit that we've set up, and it requires cooperation with others and that's why we're having a global fraud summit next year. Okay, squads and summits. Lastly, the Daily Telegraph is very excited. They say that spies are going to be brought in. Obviously, you can't divulge too much as the M figure in this, but can you give us a little more detail, Mr Tugendhat? Well, Nick, you you know my role in in this, and so you know that all I can do is look down the camera and smile. Um, but the the reality is the uh, there's enormous amounts of cooperation going into this, and let me let me tell you why. It's not just because there are families and individuals across the United Kingdom who are being scammed and robbed. I mean, I can tell you about people in the community I'm lucky enough to represent who've lost life savings, who've lost you know huge amounts of uh, independence and 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 autonomy by uh, being conned out of uh, out of their savings by people. Of broad. But it's also, I'm afraid, an overlap between uh, terrorist groups and state threats where uh, states and terror groups are using con men to uh, launder money and to get money out of the country. And we're seeing this link with organised crime as well. So getting the intelligence agencies involved is uh, about making sure that we are all safer. And that's why we've set up this National Fraud Intelligence Unit. A couple of other areas to cover before I do. May I ask you, Minister, have you ever fallen victim or one of your families ever been duped in this fashion? So I'm I'm not sure. I think I probably have. There was a there was an instance a little while ago, but I, I'm I'm. It's one of those areas where you 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 wonder for a bit, but you're not 100 percent sure whether it's just a company that didn't deliver the service or whether you were actually conned. Um, but I can tell you, I represent many people who have. And recently, a Ukrainian uh, lady who sought asylum in the United Kingdom, as many uh, have, very generously, as the uh, mm. as the British people have been extraordinarily generous, was conned by somebody. Uh, claiming to be HMRC, the tax man, and uh, I'm very glad that the bank responded entirely appropriately and quickly and refunded her. It's very important to say the tax man or woman, no bank, no financial institution will ever ask you to make payments via a text, and let's just get that out there. And if in doubt, I would suggest slam the phone down. Tom Tugendhat, I'm sure you'd agree with that. I totally agree. If you are in any doubt at all, put the phone down and call back a number that you found on a regular website uh, on the on the official website of the company. Do not 
in any way assume that the company is calling you, you can always call back. Sage words. I've got to get a word from you on this, if I can, Minister. Buckingham Palace locked down last night after shotgun cartridges were thrown over the gates. Um, A, is there any more detail you can give us? B, how confident are you that all security measures are in place for events this weekend? Nick, look, you're going to understand, I can't say any more about that particular incident, except to say that the police did a fantastic job. I mean, this is something that we have been planning for, as you will understand, for many, many months. Uh, and I've been extraordinarily impressed with the way that the police and, uh, in fact, many different polices, uh, police forces around the country have been working together uh, to make sure that we're all ready. Now, let's not forget, although the focus is quite rightly going to be on Westminster Abbey on Saturday, there are community events across the whole of the United Kingdom. I'm going to be at our street party on Sunday. I don't know what you're going to be up to, Nick, but there are a whole number of things going I'm on. I'm going to be covering it, Mr Tugendhat. You know, this is, <laughs> this is where the nation expects me to be. Quite, quite, quite right, Nick. How could I doubt it? How could I doubt it? But look, uh, when, when you get the chance to raise yes. a glass to our new yes, of king, course. Of I do, course I shall. You, you, you will do it safely and in a secure way because of the work of our police forces and our intelligence agencies around the country. Uh, and I have to say, I'm really proud to be working uh, for them and trying to make sure that we've got all the resources possible because we have seen that we see this quite rightly as a moment to showcase the whole of the United Kingdom. So if you're a royalist, you can uh, you can toast and celebrate the new king. And if you're not, well, look, this is an opportunity for a party and getting together yes, with community. So a it's a fantastic day for the whole of the United Kingdom. Will the events at the palace last night lead to a review of security measures? Will they alter anything, do you imagine? Look, we constantly keep security under review, as you can imagine. So I'll be talking to officers later. But the, the, the reality is we have been thinking about this and working on this for many, many months. Uh, and I'm not going to go into any right. operational issues on this, as you can imagine. The Home Office has written to the campaign group Republic saying new powers have been brought forward to prevent, quotes, disruption at major sporting and cultural events. From today, the law... Given royal assent means protesters who block roads, airports and railways can face 12 months behind bars and they're considerably more robust. Do you support sending out those letters? They've been said to be intimidatory. intimidatory. Well, I think making sure that people are aware of the law is the responsibility of government. So I, I'm, I'm not sure I find that terribly surprising. I think what's also important is that this, yes, it's been brought forward for the coronation, but these are powers that the police have been asking for for ages. Nick, you'll remember only a few months ago, ambulances being stopped here in London from being able to uh, get people to hospital by people who were protesting. Now, that's just not right. And, you know, we've seen different people around the country having their lives massively disrupted by people who, for one pressure group or another, want to close down a road. Now, that, again, is just not right. The British people need to have the opportunity to, uh, you know, have a, a prosperous and happy life. And the government has set out its plans to halve inflation, grow the economy, reduce debt, cut waiting lists and stop the votes. And we can't do any of that if the economy isn't working. So we've got to make sure that we are constantly delivering on the interests of the British people. And this law, asked for by the police many, many months ago, is coming in, yeah, a little bit early, but it's coming in in order to make sure that our economy can grow, that we can reduce in the debt, that we can halve inflation, that we can cut waiting lists right. and that we can stop the boats. Last couple of questions. How surprised are you by the actions of Sue Gray in refusing to incorporate into this Cabinet Office investigation? Well, I, th I think the person I'm most surprised at, frankly, is Keir Starmer. Uh, I mean, he's painted himself as a white knight in all this and, and he's not cooperating with the civil service or rather he's not asking the person he nominated to cooperate with the civil service uh, body that's, uh, that's investigating it. So, you know, I mean, that's a, it's a decision for him, obviously, but it, it does raise questions. Local elections coming up. What would represent a good result for the Conservatives on Friday morning? 500 lost seats? What would it be, Minister? Uh, Nick, look, I'm, I'm not a fortune teller, but I can tell you that uh, uh, that councils like Tunbridge and Morning and Sevenoaks uh, in my area are delivering fantastic uh, results for the British people. And I hope very much that people will support them. You know, there's a pretty clear contrast. You've seen here uh, the mayor in London, the Labour mayor in London, raising taxes on the British people, raising taxes and, and, and holding back the economy here in London. Whereas in conservative areas, council tax is about £80 uh, less than in labour areas. So there's a real opportunity for us to make sure that we do deliver a better outcome for the British people, but a Conservative government, a Conservative council is needed to do it. Grateful for your time as ever. Thank you, Security Minister Tom Tugendhat, appearing here on LBC. We're at 8 o'clock. Let's get the latest news headlines from Thomas Watts. On your radio, on Global Player and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. 
From Global's newsroom at 8 o'clock, banks will be allowed to delay 